Hello folks, Rob H. Henderson here, the H Factor. Every Sunday we're here from 6 to 10. We host the Sunday sessions here at La Rose. We call it the intergenerational jam sessions. His idea was to mix the younger generation with more seasoned professionals on the bandstand. And this is a way for them to learn in real time what it is to be a professional on the gig. My mother was a classically trained pianist who also studied violin, viola, cello, and organ. Played organ for church, uh, worked with musicians. In high school at Germantown, she had a band. Reggie Workman and Archie Shep were in her band when she played piano. My grandmother, growing up in her home, we were a four-generational home, she did not say no to the arts. And if you can imagine, 12 years old, sitting in the Bucks County Playhouse watching Shakespeare in the round and bored to tears. But it was culture she was exposing us to. And um, when I was about 16, my youth organization at church, um, <laughs> we needed new choir robes. So another friend on the choir and I decided, we're gonna have a dance. We auditioned some groups and um, decided, okay, let's do this. Unfortunately for us, we were 16 years old and legally couldn't sign the contracts. So my mom signed and her father signed, I'm telling my age here, but the band was breakwater. <laughs> we only had to pay them a couple of hundred bucks. We ended up having three bands, four dances, but we raised the money for new choir robes for the youth council. And we left some money for the church. So that was my humble beginning. And my mother was right there with us. Oh no, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You know, so that was a, a great experience. When I was around 16, 17 years old, I was living in Nice Town, and around the corner um, from me was a hook shop. And a hook shop is a place where they sold fake jewelry, you know, watches and chains. And in the back, um, the proprietor of the place was a guy named Bill and he used to wear a cowboy hat. <laughs> he wore this cowboy hat with the front bent down like that. And he played drums. And this guy, Bill, used to actually set his drums up in bars and play along with the jukebox and play along with go-go girls. And I used to cut school and go to the hook shop and hang out in the back with these guys and I used to sit there and, and play on the timbales, and, and I played timbales with a hi-hat. And on my 18th birthday, shortly after, I went and bought a drum set. I played left-handed for about a year and a half, and a guitar player named Vincent Holsley, he asked me, are you right-handed or left-handed? And I said, I'm right-handed. <laughs> and he said, man, you playing backwards. <laughs> and so, so he took the hi-hat, and, 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 and the snare, and he put it on the right side, and I played that way. I was like, oh, this does feel better. <laughs> uh, and, and this is around 1978, you know, and within the next couple of years, I put the, a band together with my brothers. I had um, four brothers, one passed away two years ago, but um, Greg played trumpet, Fred played bass, Sean played trombone, and Galen played saxophone. And so from around 79 to about 82, I was known in Philly as the Henderson Brothers. I first met Rob at the uh, old LG Blue Note in West Oak Lane. They had a Monday Jam session with Tony Williams, Eddie Green, Tyrone Brown, and Al Tasty Cake Jackson on drums. And uh, it was one of the places also that we were doing the jazz breakfasts. And my mother would bring in um, Nat Adderley with a very young Vincent Herring. Uh, first met him back then. She uh, also brought in Donald Byrd during that time period. And um, Rob was, was in and out. He and I would run into each other maybe down at Ortlieb's. Well, this happened um, when Ortlieb's was having their jam session um, and they decided to stop. And I was talking with uh, Mike Boone, you know, at La Rose because he was playing, you know, he plays there every Monday. And I was like, wow, it's, there's no place, you know, for these young cats to come play, you know. And I was, I don't know why I was concerned, but I was actually concerned, you know, because I 
you know, I thought at that time it was important for them to have an outlet and just have a place where they can just come and hang and play. And Rob decided, you know, I think I want to try something. So he looked at a few places. La Rose was one of them in Germantown. Byrett Lancaster had contacted me, I guess a few years before, to say that there was live music at La Rose, this little place. It used to be Mama La Rose's um, restaurant or something. And my mother had also gone in there a few times to, you know, support Byrett. Uh, we used to call him the Pied Piper growing up. But, uh, I did not know Rob was doing the session. I got a phone call from Orrin Evans, and he said, Kim, Rob's doing the jam session on Sundays. I said, okay, where? He said, at LaRose. What I elected to do was pay the band myself, and that way I have control over how long the session would go. And, you know, I always had a week to make up enough money to pay the band, you know, and, and it's so funny because during the week, the first money I made was the money I would put that on the side and say, okay, I got the band money, so we're gonna make this thing happen. So I come in and this guy jumps up and says, hi, I'm Les Hinton, I'm the photographer. Byrd had always told me, document everything. How is she gonna know that it happened? So years ago, I when I used to go to Natalie's uh, out in West Philly, and uh, go to different places, I started keeping a little notepad and jotting down the musicians and the songs, just for my own personal history. So I did the same thing a few times at La Rose, but I saw that maybe word needed to get out, more people needed to come. She would, for lack of a better word, she would do like a commentary on, on social media each night you know, as the musicians played, she would write down the songs, who played, and give a small narrative of the night. And it kind of caught on because I noticed now on social media, in particular Facebook, I didn't see this before, Kim. Now I see like when people have gigs and you see a narrative of the gig. And it's funny because if she would miss a day, I would see posts on Facebook, Kim, what happened Sunday? And word started getting out. We had Cornell Rochester pop in there. Reggie Workman came by to see what was happening when he was in town. And then, aside from those notables, we started getting people in from other countries. When I would start seeing parents bringing their 15 and 16 year old kids there and dropping them off and coming up to me, thanking me for, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for doing this. You know, we have nowhere to go. We had kids that came from as far as Reading, PA, you know, and then as word um, got out, we had young folks from as far as way as Amsterdam, you know, where the first place they wanted to come was, look, I want to get to La Rose because I hear it's a really great session there, you know, and not just the young kids, but we had some older people that were kind of new to the music and it was just as enthusiastic for them as well as some of the young kids. Uh, the great thing about that, it was cross-generational. It was not about the music, but it's what they were learning, not just on the bandstand, sitting down talking to these elders off the bandstand, learning about the music business from the ground up and how to conduct themselves. And that's really become the focus of the Sunday sessions. But that's what this music does. It creates a sense of family. And Rob went from being an acquaintance to being like a brother in the five years that we've been doing these Sunday sessions. It was a really great run and I don't regret it. And I would love to do it again. And I would at the drop of a hat. You know, I appreciate everyone, musicians, and this was one of the few jam sessions where we had an audience of non-musicians that came on a regular basis to hear jazz music and was thoroughly entertained by all the different acts that would be on that bandstand. And I just want to thank each and every one of you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. It's something I think that we will have with us the rest of our lives that for this time period, we brought people together 
of all walks of life on a Sunday from 6 to, six to 10 and I had a great time. All kinds of weather. <laughs> you know, we were just there and just glad to be there.